What's going on guys? Welcome back to the return of Fan Mail of the Week Q&A session where we haven't done one of these in a very long time and just to sum it up for you guys, for those of you out there who are new, this pretty much is going to be the basic Q&A that we're going to be starting up on the channel guys. So in case you guys have any question to ask me in regards to Dragon Ball or any other question you guys want to know about me, you guys can go on ahead and drop your questions down in the comment section below for me to go on ahead and answer in the upcoming Q&A video. I really miss doing these. There was actually a point in time where I was doing this for about two and a half years straight every single week answering questions so i want to see how long we can keep this going if you guys can go on ahead and leave a like on the video to show your support it'll really mean a lot to me and plus it'll actually motivate me to do more so without wasting any time guys let's go on ahead and begin with the very first question which is from adam spear thank god you brought back fan mail q a's i've watched this series back in 2013 and 2014 damn and this really made me feel good because i felt like i learned more about you thank you man Please don't end the series, uh, and now that this is separate from the Dragon Ball Q&As, when do you plan on doing more of these? Here are my questions. Okay, well, I mean, I, we are going to be doing two separate Q&As. We're going to do the regular Q&A fan mails, and we're going to do Dragon Ball Q&As. So question number one, what inspires you to keep going on YouTube? You put so much time into the site. How do you do it? What makes you continue to push the way you do? It's insane because a very small handful of YouTubers put in the work you do. Trust me, brother, it's not easy, but I'll explain why. Question two, what are your three horror movies you are looking forward to seeing this year, if any? Question three, did you see any of the new Dave Chappelle Netflix specials? If you did, what did you think? Well, thank you so much, Adam. Now, to answer your first question, and I really hope you guys really take the time to listen in on this, my philosophy in life is I don't want to be a basic person. I don't want to be an average Joe. I don't want to be one of those guys that just so happens to have a nine to five job. I've been there, I've done that. I, I've had multiple jobs in multiple different fields. I was a security guard, I was a GameStop employee. I used to work at certain convenience stores. I used to do hard labor for construction, which was the most difficult thing I ever had to do. I was a banker, I was a doorkeeper. I, I used to do a lot of things. And so I don't want to have to go back to doing that. And there's nothing wrong with having a nine to five, but I feel as if we as human beings have the potential to go far in life to exceed a basic nine to five job which is why i wrestle which is why i do youtube which is why i want to own my own business which is why i want to do so many things because my philosophy is success without success you're nothing in life i mean you're always going to be someone out there that's going to have the potential to do something but you just don't end up doing it and for me i've done so many different things in my life that i want to do more and i want to become someone and leave an impact in this world i want to help people i want to i want to be i want to make sure that i have you know an establishment at home to where when Whenever it is I decide to have my own family, which is what I want in life. I mean, spoiler alert for anyone out there who wants to know, I do want to get married, I do want to have kids, and I want to make sure that my kids have everything that I never had in life. And let me tell you guys something, I grew up rough. Anyone out there who wants to think they know, you know, something about you or, or they think they know, trust me, nobody knows out there. I mean, nobody really knows the real me other than the real people that surround themselves with me on a day-to-day -day basis. And, you know, for someone to say, oh yeah, I got them all figured out, brother, there's so much about me that people don't know about that you wish you had me figured out. But what keeps me going on YouTube is just having to I don't know, it, it's 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 a passion of mine. I, I wanna entertain, I wanna be compensated for the work that I do, and I wanna express my passion and my love for video games, for movies, for Dragon Ball, for various other things, you know? I just love doing YouTube. I was doing YouTube before YouTube was actually YouTube. I was doing this way back when I was a kid, you know, 12, 13, 14 years old, with a stupid pocket camera, with a standard def, low quality pocket camera, recording my friends and I out there in the park, you know, recreating Resident Evil skits and stuff i used to do this way back before any of these youtubers but i never knew about the site until 2006 when i first came on the scene and i did my very first ever video which was a wwe slash tna response video to another youtuber called rvd tito for life that's that's how deep my roots run on this site and what inspires me to keep going is, again, I want to hear people's opinions. I want to hear people's feedback. And it's not cliche because I have irrefutable factual evidence to support this claim that I do interact with you guys on Discord, that I do reply to your comments. How many of you guys can sit here and tell me, you know, if I reply to your comment? You guys can see that firsthand. There were even certain people asking me, Alex, how come you reply to so many comments? Because I, number one, sometimes when I do have the time, I want to reply. And number two, I, I want to get feedback. I want to get feedback from people. And 
What inspires me to keep going is again, for me, one of my philosophies is that YouTube is a platform that I can build my future with and YouTube is a platform to where I can establish a family in the future and I can help get them situated. And you know, I put a lot of time into this and even, even more so before than I used to do now, even though now I put in a lot of time into this before when I used to have a nine to five, this was my daily routine. I used to get up at 7 a.m. and I used to go to work until four and I would sit there and I would actually reply to comments as much as I could, you know, that being my bank job, I used to just be there and just reply to comments and just do my own thing. And then when I would come home, I would go straight to the gym from around 5 to like 6.30. I would come back, take a shower, so roughly around 7 o'clock, I would either be doing YouTube videos and recording up until like maybe 2, 3 in the morning and then going to sleep, or I would go to wrestling practice, come back around 9 or 10 o'clock at night, take a shower, and then do YouTube until like 3 in the morning. So I have a strong passion for this. Now what makes me continue is you guys, your support, your love, your feedback. I've, I've established so many great friendships through this site through making videos with you guys that I cherish that so much and I would never take that for granted and I do want to say thank you all so much for always being there you know despite other people's nonsense and, and, and lies and claims about me despite what someone may think of my content granted I am not a perfect youtuber but I try my very best and there's no other person out there that can take away my passion or even deny that because the proof is in the pudding. I put time into this, you know, almost 4,000 videos later and I'm still on the site grinding as if I only put out two videos. You get what I'm saying? So what inspires me is having an envisionment uh, for the future. I want to create a future. I want to, you know, build my brand, which is Unreal Gaming. I want to go in ahead and build the brand of Unreal. I want to leave an impact and inform people and educate people, but also keep you guys entertained, laugh with you guys, you know, just share memories with you guys. That's just me. I don't care what anyone says. That's just what I do. You know, I, I, I have 4,000 videos later and I'm still going to do 4,000 more. No problem. That's just one of my passions. This, this thing has become a passion. And I, at first it became a hobby and now it's a business. It's not just a business, but it's a, it's a passion for me. So, you know, for those who have supported me and motivated me and I've seen the results in views and comments and likes, that shit gets me up and going. I mean, that makes me, you know, feel good and saying, wow, people do care. And I go back and I do more for you guys. So that's just me. I mean, I, I, I can get more into it, but I don't want to make this just about, you know, that particular field, you know? Now, to answer your second question, three horror movies that I'm looking forward to this year. Uh, that's a pretty good question. I, I, I'm probably looking forward to, geez, I mean, they canceled Friday the 13th, so that was pretty much a bummer for me. Uh, but I'm gonna have to say Annabelle is definitely a movie that I'm looking forward to because I want to see, you know, how exactly they go ahead and make the movie. Hopefully enough, it follows, you know, solely based on what happened in the book, but we're just gonna have to wait and see on that. But, uh, Annabelle with the nurses, uh, the second film is definitely, and this is not in chronological order, but, uh, it. Pennywise the Clown, I cannot wait for that. If anything, that's my highly most anticipated film for the year in terms of horror. So I'm gonna have to go with It, Annabelle, and then last but not least, just out of curiosity, because I really want to see how they do this, I'm gonna have to go with uh, Saw Legacy, because I know they're making another Saw movie. Even though I kind of fell off Saw after watching the fourth movie, I never saw anything after that, because I just thought it was pointless. I think watching Saw, oh, Saw 1 and 2 were the best for me. Saw 1 and 2 were the best, but I really want to see how they continue the legacy of Jigsaw, and I'm just really curious to see how, in modern days today, they can go on ahead and execute the same formula while keeping a good story. So to answer your third question, did I see the new Dave Chappelle sh uh, special? I, I did. I loved it. Um, there were a lot of people that were just like, oh man, you know, he said too many, you know, bad things, and he said this and that, and he was sexist, and he was this and that. People just get butthurt these days, man. If you guys haven't seen the Dave Chappelle uh, specials on Netflix, go ahead and watch them. They're hilarious. There's a lot of shit that Dave said that you can relate to and just laugh back on, but I also felt as if Dave Chappelle was heavily holding himself back. He didn't want to say the wrong things in a way, and you can clearly tell Especially in his first special, because his second special, I think he was more outgoing. But his first special, he, it looked like he was afraid to offend the crowd because there were certain people in the crowd that were booing him for certain things he said, which is all a bunch of social justice warrior millennial pussies that can't handle a joke. So 
I did enjoy it. I did watch it. And for those of you who haven't watched it, I suggest for you guys to go ahead and check that out. So anyways, Adam, thank you so much for the questions, brother. And I hope you have a fantastic day, man. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Daniel on Twitter, AKA Dragon Films. Do you have any specific goals for your channel in the coming months slash years? Or are you just going with the flow? Well, thank you so much, Dragon Films. Um, to be quite honest, I do have a goal. I do have uh, certain achievements that I want to achieve. Um, for the coming months slash years of the channel, uh, this is the rundown. Hopefully by December, and I'm just hoping that everything goes well, and through your support, I'm hoping that the channel gets to 400,000 subscribers by the end of the year. If we can go way past that, that'll also be a blessing. But as of right now, the goal is to reach 400,000 subscribers. And another little goal of mine is to incorporate more Let's Plays and you know, gaming onto the channel. Now, I've done that before, but not enough. I've done lots and lots of Dragon Ball, which I love and enjoy, but later on this year, when some of the newer games come out, like the new Call of Duty World War II, whatever that may be, or, you know, some of Destiny 2, even uh, Days Gone. Days Gone is a zombie game that I cannot wait to play because it reminds me so much of World War Z, and I love zombies. Anyone who knows me would tell you that I'm a huge fan for zombies. I'm a huge fan for, you know, zombie-like games and movies. So definitely that as well. Even Outlast 2. I cannot wait to play Outlast 2. I'm going to bring that to the channel. So a secondary goal is to bring more Let's Plays and gaming onto the channel. A third goal is to do more movie talks. Uh, similar to what I did with Godzilla and King Kong and Pacific Rim 2 and Halloween. I'm going to do more in-depth explain videos and more movie talks with you guys. So in case some of you guys do have Discord and you have me added on Discord, maybe we can get in there and have a movie conversation, which I am open to doing so. Um, but as of right now, 400,000 subscribers. In the coming years, hopefully enough, we can actually go past 500,000. I don't see why that's not the case. Um, even though it may not seem realistic to many, I feel as if we can achieve that. The ultimate goal, I think, for the channel overall is to hit a million subscribers. And I do know that it's achievable and possible because as seen with Tyrone Magnus, he always says, one million subscribers, you know, stuff like that. So, and he actually, he's, he's there. So I think that it's achievable and it can be done. Um, but the only way we can do that is if you guys spread the word about the channel and you know just continue to support the channel as much as you can because that ultimately means more to me than you can possibly even imagine. But I do have several goals, um, even for my secondary and third channels, my vlogging channel, I do have more goals to vlog on there as well. In case you guys don't know anything about my vlogging channel, I have a vlogging channel which is Unreal Vlogs and I have my secondary channel Unreal Network and on Unreal Network is pretty much updates and movie talks and pretty much rants. Lots and lots of rants on like wrestling and stuff like that. So you guys might want to go ahead and check that out as well. Um, but those are the goals for right now, Daniel. So anyways, man, thank you for the questions and I hope you have a great day, bro. And now moving on to the next question, which is from Joel Figueroa or JMaster25. Can you describe your life in New York growing up and present day? Well, yo, to be honest, um, growing up was very, very, very rough. Um, I wouldn't say that I had the worst life, but I wouldn't say I had the best either. Now, to describe my life growing up, um, imagine single mother trying to raise, you know, a boy and uh, me having to get bullied, you know, throughout the neighborhood, throughout, you know, school. And I think it was roughly around middle school towards like the middle ish of middle school when I was, you know, uh, I, I guess like in the seventh grade it was when I really started turning around. Um, and I, I, I had a fight for myself. I'll, I'll never forget, I'm gonna leave his last name out of it, but the very first fight I ever had was against this kid named Robert, right? And so to make a long story short, back in school, you know, back during those days, there were lots of like, you know, delinquents everywhere, like little mini gang bangers here and there. I mean, it was just pretty bad. And this kid, you know, thought that I kept eyeing him during gym class and I kept talking about him. I, I didn't even know anything about him. But, you know, uh, uh, like other kids were egging him on and they were like, yeah, you know, like in, like instigating. And so towards the end of the day, you know, just as we're about to leave home when we go home, this kid comes into my classroom as everyone's leaving and everyone sees him and he's there and everyone knows that, that he has a problem with me. So I'm sitting down, whatever, and he's talking trash. And uh, I'll never forget, like, he, he kind of like mushed my face. 
and I got up and I started just hitting him. I started hitting him so hard. I started beating the shit out of him. I mean, the whole class was just like, oh, because nobody ever thought that I was going to stand up for myself. And then ever since that day, anytime someone would fuck with me, I would, I would definitely, without even thinking, you know, fight back because I, I hated being the quiet kid. I, I was always the quiet kid. Um, I didn't really, I, I didn't like to start trouble and whatnot, but I became a troublemaker over time because after, you know, the eighth grade, I went into high school and, uh, in high school I was involved with gangs and, uh, I, I was, I was a part of a, a lot of interesting things. I think, um, the worst thing I was ever a part of was a shooting, a gang shooting. Um, I was involved. There were a few others involved. There were lots of people involved actually. Uh, but I'll never forget there was a shooting. Uh, and uh, to make a long story short, a lady got shot in the leg by accident due to someone else. It's just a very long, long story. I mean, hopefully enough, one of these days I can explain more. But um, I was involved in a street gang, which was affiliated with a big gang, which was the Bloods. And uh, I, I used to have a lot of homies and I used to just rock, you know, with a lot of different people. Um, but, you know, growing up then and having to look at myself now, for those of you who follow me at Twitter like yourself, if you guys have not checked out my uh, previous uh, photos that I put up, I mean, I, I, I would say a month ago, you would see how I was back in the day. Like, I short hair, hanging out with just, you know, the wrong crowd. And life now, life now is, is just me working hard. And I wish that I knew more about this when I was a little bit younger because i mean we're all narrow-minded and we're all like pretty arrogant and stubborn when we're younger but to describe my life growing up um it was rough but at the same time i had a great childhood with my neighborhood friends my neighborhood friends um we used to just do the craziest things man and there, there used to be a lot of us too i can name them all on the top of my head it was and this is what you know the crew the original crew consisted of it was myself, Mikey, Milton, Steven, Camille, Ricky, Roger, Big Mike, Chris. Uh, we also had Jonathan. We also had Brandon. We also had a couple of females, Marlena and Raina and Stephanie. And we had uh, a kid named Danny. And we also had a kid named Robert and Marios. So that's about 17 heads right there. And we were all so fucking close. You guys have no idea how close I was with these people. And what happened to change was certain people got into drugs, certain people got into gangs, certain people moved away, certain people, you know, just got older and they drifted apart. And uh, it sucks because looking at it now, I truly miss my original friends and they're all still around, but everyone has a job. Some people are having kids. So it's, it's very, very, very difficult now than how it was back when I was like, 14 15 16 17 years old you know growing up with the squad and just you know having to play manhunt on the street and tag and you know, you know playing the xbox in, in each other's houses and you know fighting together and shit like it was incredible so my life i would say uh, up until this point uh, was a blessing and it is a blessing um but i definitely I, I definitely miss my childhood growing up because even though i went through tough times i mean those were some of the best times that i would ever even ask for so Lots of memories down there, bro. So anyways, man, thank you so much for the questions, and I hope you have a great day, my friend. Now, moving on to the next question, which is from SpideyManFan24. What got you into wrestling? Well, um, I actually came across wrestling by accident. I mean, I've told this story many times before, but uh, I was in my local video store at the time. Yeah, I know video stores back in the day. And I rented out South Park, and what I thought was South Park, I, I popped in the, uh, the tape, and it was an episode of Monday Night Raw. And, you know, as I'm watching this, I see Kane and The Undertaker and DX, and I'm watching this, and I saw Kane for the first time, and I fell in love with Kane and, and The Undertaker because as soon as I saw them, they were choke slamming people and last riding people. Like, it was just so fun to watch. And I'm, I'm sitting there, and I'm like, what the hell is this? Like, this is amazing. Like, I've never seen something like this before, and ever since... You know, it just got me hooked and I said to myself, as I kept watching over the days and years, I kept saying to myself, you know, this is something that I'm going to do for the rest of my life. I, I, I want to do this. I want to pursue this. I, I love the way the atmosphere is. I, I, I just love the way the overall, like, you know, presentation of wrestling is. And I, was, I, I said to myself as a kid, I was like, this is what I want to be. This is what I want to do. And uh, here we are today. I mean, I'm, I'm actually a pro wrestler and it's not as easy as people would like to assume it is. 
it's a pain in the ass both physically and mentally it uh it's very grueling and it's unlike anything i've ever done in my life before it's it's definitely been a great experience but it's also been a very depressing one at the same time uh because there's certain things that happen in wrestling that can really fuck you up but uh ever since that day you know that's what got me into wrestling and i fell in love ever since and i really could not wait to you know see more and during that time like i didn't really have cable or anything like that so like i had to wait until like tapes came out and whatnot it was just it was a crazy time um but yeah that's what got me into wrestling and ever since you know i've been pursuing that and i've always you know I, i've always loved the originals like you know stone cold and jeff hardy and undertaker and kane and you know a lot of these old dudes like the rock and stuff you know but nowadays it's it's different and i wish i can go back to that time because again that was that was the more simpler time than how it is now but that's that's what got me into wrestling bro Anyways, my friend, I want to say thank you so much for the questions, and I hope you have a great day, man. Now, moving on to the next question, which is from Oscar. Have any hopes in joining any higher promotions someday? Well, um, yes, I do. I mean, I don't see any other worker or wrestler who doesn't want to be in a higher promotion. Um, as of right now, I'm retraining myself, and uh, I'm in House of Glory Wrestling, so that's a blessing in and of itself. Um, in terms of joining higher promotions, I do want to be a part of new japan pro wrestling i do want to be a part of ring of honor i do want to work for evolve i was in evolve before um i was i, I did a dark match for evolve well like in a tag team match um and that went very very well so i did that and uh hopefully enough down the line i you know have more opportunities to join higher promotions like pwg but the ultimate goal is obviously nxt and wwe but uh, as of now i guess you know my uh, higher promotions for joining them would be Ring of Honor, Evolve, New Japan, PWG, promotions of that nature. Um, there might be several others that I just can't name on the top of my head, but uh, in terms of joining those, those are the goals to, you know, go ahead and get myself involved in. But uh, with all great things, it just takes a little bit of time. So anyways, Oscar, bro, thank you so much for the question. And I hope you have a great day, man. And once again, I do want to say thank you all so very much for watching Fan Mail of the Week Q&A. It's finally back. If you guys have any questions to ask me, it pertains to anything you would like to know or get my opinion on. Drop your questions down below, guys. I truly hope you guys did enjoy this episode. And again, if you guys did, don't forget to leave a like on the video. If you guys are new to the channel, if you guys want me to continue this, go on ahead and subscribe, guys. And let me know down below as to if you guys want to see more of this. Because, I mean, I, just speaking to you guys, like like this just you know about my life and whatnot like i, I truly enjoy that and I, I truly appreciate the questions so again guys i hope you guys have a fantastic day thank you all for watching and i'll be seeing you all in the next fan mail video take it easy guys peace